morning. Jim's little boat. I'm Jim. It's four in the morning. I've been up for about an hour. It's the curse of old men. I can't stay awake past 8.30 at night and I wake up at 3, 4, or 5 in the morning and I just go to work because there's no point trying to go back to sleep. Those are my problems. I wanted to talk to you today about electrical work on the boat. I've already done some and I'll show you that later in this video and I'm going to do more where I have to stick my head down inside the port settee hatch and rewire that little USB charger. So. When I do that, I take a box of stuff with me so I don't have to run back and forth to the house. And I'm going to show you the contents of this electrical box. Let's start with this one. I'm pretty proud of this. This is just a bunch of wires. You'll notice they're red and black and they have a number of connectors on them. There's alligator clips, there's spade clips, and there's bayonet clips. By using these, I can test circuits, try things out, and keep my colors straight so I know what's what. Very useful device. I just sat in here one day when I had nothing else to do. Typical Washington rain. And I made up a set of wires to make the whole electrical experience inside the boat less painful. Let's see what else is in the box. This is a little kit that was given to me. It's full of automotive style fasteners. I don't use these on the boat. I will use them on the trailer if I don't have anything better. But in here, I do have the correct kind of fittings. These are the kinds of connectors I like to use. I get them from West Marine. They come in a little box. They're perfect in the marine environment. You crimp them down. And after that's done, I put a heat shrink fitting over the top of all the wires and tie everything up. This one is too small for that. In fact, I've got to go to the store this afternoon and get some more. A little set of screwdrivers preferably magnetized, is very helpful inside the boat. Doesn't work on the stainless or the aluminum, but it helps you for picking up the things you dropped that you didn't want to use anyway. More heat shrink fittings. You can't possibly have enough of these. Not only do they work great for electrical, they provide a waterproof barrier and a mechanical bond, but sometimes you use them on rigging to keep all those little stray wires corralled. Of course, you'll need some good wire strippers. Crimping tool, which is also wire strippers, but I just prefer the blue ones. And still another pair of strippers that are also nice little pliers. Here we have a battery powered soldering iron. Yeah, it kind of works, not so well, really. Doesn't get hot enough. Whenever I can run a cord, I use that. Here's a butane powered soldering iron. Works a little better, still prefer plug one into the wall and use that when I can get the electricity into the boat. And of course you need 120 volt soldering iron. I happen to have three, I think. This one is nice. It gets real hot, pinpoint precision. I also have a couple of the Weller soldering guns, but those are over in my electrical toolbox. Of course you need a roll of solder. I like some different colors of tape. All of the negatives are black. All the positives are red, and I prefer the white for making labels. I like to label every wire when it enters the bus bar. Plus, I take a picture of the bus bar and write down on that picture what wire goes where. Just a regular old continuity tester. Nothing but a probe with a battery and a light bulb in it. Works great. And, of course, you need a little voltmeter. This one's actually bigger than I like. My little one must be out on the boat already. Oops, almost forgot. You need a red and a black Sharpie. Sometimes you'll find a wire that's the wrong color and you should either put some black tape on that wire or you should mark it with a Sharpie. Be consistent. Life is much easier when you know that if you grab a black wire, it's ground. No discussion. This little gem is a rechargeable 12 volt battery. I charge it up on the trickle charger, take it into the boat with me and I have a nice portable power source anytime I want to test an individual circuit. When you add that to the wires, you have a powerful combination. And of course, to make all this stuff work, you need a nice collection of marine grade wire. I always buy a lot more than I need. Keep it in a box, it comes in handy. Nobody wants to run over to West Marine in the middle of a job. And of course, we need a trickle charger. We use this one to keep the boat battery up all winter long so I can use the internal lights. And this is the charger that charges up the little battery.
So that's kind of the whole deal on electrical. I keep it in two diaper boxes I got from one of my grandchildren. And all of this stuff fits in there, take it out to the boat. And life is relatively easy when you're trying to do a wiring project. You're not jumping up and down, climbing up and down the ladder, or in my case, the stairs. But collected over time, I certainly didn't spend all that money in one day. The charging leads from the outboard have just been ongoing pain in the rear. They come unplugged every time you raise and lower the motor. So just decided to add a couple inches of wire with a polarized plug. Uh, I've already done it on the motor. This is working on the boat here, obviously. And that should make life just a whole bunch easier. Yeah, that should do it. Looks good. Well, I screwed up a little bit yesterday. I should have had a really big shrink and put on there, but I forgot. So I got some friction tape here, some electrician's tape, actually. I think friction's tape is an old word. And I kind of muffed up the edge. So I'll trim that with some scissors, like so. And then I'll turn this into a nice, neat bundle wrapped up in tape. Shrink would have been better. I'm really sorry. I forgot, but this will work fine. And we'll just wrap it up until we have a nice, neat bundle. Heat shrink. That'll be fine. Gives us a little more mechanical advantage for holding everything together. Helps keep the water out. And uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to test it until April, but I'm pretty sure it'll work. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it. So that's all there is to it, and this is just as important as the beginning. Get it out here and kind of get it smoothed down and burnish it. And again, trim it at an angle. And finish wrapping it up and burnish it down. And you'll have a nice job there. So here's Jim's little hint of the day. Sometimes it's not practical to use heat shrink fittings. You have to use friction tape instead. And there's a big temptation because you're out there and it's hard to reach to go like that and just tear it. But when you do that, it will never lay flat. It kind of wrinkles and tries to get back into position. It's just kind of a mess. So a better solution is to take a pair of scissors or a utility knife, if you don't have any scissors, and just kind of trim it diagonally very gently. And then it will lay on the job very nicely and you won't have a big mess. I'm going to go back to work cleaning up the shop so I can bring out the sails and lay them on the workbench and the table so I have plenty of room. But in the meantime, I've got the trickle charger working on that small battery. Mm -hmm.